I just broke the law. Look, I try to be an upstanding citizen and avoid breaking the law when I can, but man, is it hard to keep up with every little law out there. There are so many of them and some are pretty weird. So weird and specific that you don't even know that they're laws. I could be breaking a law right now, right this very moment, and not even know it. Massachusetts and the city of Boston have plenty of these strange antiquated laws that are still on the books. And we're gonna take a journey through them. Exploding golf balls, sidewalk spitting, game time cussing. I got some legal gems to share with you. And joining us on this journey is Dan Farbman, a law professor at Boston College. He's seen a lot in his studies of legal history and local government law. Local governments have extremely specific laws, and it's very difficult to uh, to get them off the books once they come on the books. But those laws sometimes are they're not so much weird laws, they're laws that somebody has a good reason to want, and there's no constituency to fight back against them. And once some of these laws are made, they just kind of sit there being pointless because lawmakers are too busy debating over important things, you know, like, human rights and the environment and, I don't know, healthcare. It's like these laws are like having something in the, having stuff in the attic, right? Some of the stuff in the attic is just dumb and some of it is toxic, but it's all in the attic and nobody wants to look through the attic. Well, we're gonna go through the attic and Professor Farman is going to rate what we find from one gavel, not too bad, to five gavels, a truly ridiculous law by modern standards. First up is a law about the most spangled national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Oh say can you see by the dawn's early light what's so proud? Turns out you can be fined up to $100 in Massachusetts if you dare to sing or play even a little bit of the national anthem in a public place without finishing it. That one strikes me as more like a three or four gavels, although it's consistent with a certain kind of demanding uh, of how we are patriotic in public. And don't even try to make a sick EDM dance remix to the song, because that's illegal too. Can't play the anthem to a dance beat. Speaking of things you can't do outside, you could be fined $10 for playing ball in the streets of Boston, according to a city of Boston ordinance. I give that about a, a, a two gavels. As long as the city's actually thinking carefully about its public space and deciding where would be a good idea to have baseball, I think that's kind of okay. And don't even think about driving a horse-drawn carriage through the snow or ice with fewer than three bells attached. Huh. Don't. You. Dare. You know, I think it's probably a problem to have horse-drawn carriages on the streets in the first place. The bells would be the least of my concerns. <laughs> so, give that one about four gavels, yeah. While we're talking about horses, you better not go around picking up manure without a permit or making those streets dirty in Boston. A city ordinance not only forbids you from going around sprinkling ashes, cinders, dirt, gravel, sawdust, salt, or any kind of salt mixture, it also forbids people from picking up any manure or dirt. You know, that seems more like two gavels to me because I don't think I really want someone sprinkling ashes on, on the street. Also, pickles can apparently be weaponized because a Boston law states that a street railway company cannot wash tracks or rails with brine or pickles. That one seems pretty pretty old fashioned. I'd give that one four gavels. I mean, I don't really want anyone corroding the train tracks. It sounds to me as if someone thought at one point that pickle juice was gonna be a problem. In my opinion, the only law that should exist about pickles is a nationwide ban on pickled eggs. I just don't want them to exist. They're gross. Look, it's a dangerous world out there, and Marlboro, Massachusetts wants to keep their people safe from guns, including squirt guns. You cannot buy, sell, or own a squirt gun within the city's limits, which is a bummer for kids just trying to stay cool in the summer. And Silly String is also banned. I'm gonna give that one a four, and I'll give the Silly String a three gavels. Having been a, a, a young person at one point, and seeing people light Silly String on fire. I can imagine why one might want to at least be careful about Silly String 
And squirt guns, you know, water play should not be illegal. All right, to get serious for a moment, Bartman raised a good point that while this law may seem like an overreach, recent events might actually give it some credibility. Um, we have some unfortunate history in recent times in this country to get serious for a minute about the way that police react to toy guns in the hands of kids. And so I get a little anxious about the idea of kids walking around with squirt guns. Back to the stranger stuff, by no means should you ever, ever, ever use or sell exploding golf balls in Massachusetts. I'm gonna give that one actually five gavels for the following reason. It seems to me as if you shouldn't be allowed to sell anything that's exploding with the intent to injure. And the fact that we have to locate that as particular as particularly as a golf ball strikes me as um, a weirdly specific um, and problematic distinction as if like maybe you could sell an exploding tennis ball, but an exploding golf ball is somehow particularly, particularly bad. I know it's tempting. You'll want to make golf a more extreme sport, but don't do it. Not sure why this is a law, but it looks like lawmakers are maybe watching too many cartoons, or maybe they saw the dangers of the over-the-top gender reveals all the way back in the 1950s. Speaking of chasing down birds, chasing down a birdie, it's a, it's a golf joke. It's illegal to scare off pigeons that someone else is trying to trap. This horrific offense will land you in jail for up to 30 days. Yeah, I guess that was from a time when people were hunting pigeons and you weren't allowed to get in the way of people's pigeon trapping. I give that one uh, five gavels just for its oldness, and uh, also for the fact that it strikes me as uh, it's impossible to scare a pigeon in the first place. The law also forbids you from killing a pigeon near or in someone's trap, which leads me to the real question. Who is trying to capture all these pigeons? What are you, what are you gonna do with them? They nasty. I don't even wanna look at those little sky rats. Mm. Nothing beats a cold glass of milk after a long day of trapping pigeons. But you better be on your best behavior while you do it. Defacing a milk container can land you a $10 fine. Leave my milk alone, you savage. No. I give that one three gavels. I think there's nothing, nothing worse than, than uh, spoiled milk. And so uh, I imagine that one's about trying to make sure that people have some sense of where their milk comes from and how old it is. So let's say you catch your partner committing the horrific crime of milk graffiti and want to get a divorce. Well, be prepared to pack your things. Couples who divorce but still live together can be found guilty of adultery, even if they're not having a sexual relationship. Uh, yeah, that one's definitely a five gavels. There are a bunch of laws like this that just impute old fashioned morality onto us in the present. And uh, I don't really think it's anybody's business who you live with. Yeah as if divorce wasn't complicated and awkward enough, Massachusetts. I'm a big fan of keeping cows clean, inside and out. Thanks, bro. So don't feed trash to milk cows in Massachusetts. That's a $100 fine or up to two months jail time. Feeding other animal city trash, except pigs, can land you a $50 fine or up to a month in jail. I'm give it three gavels because, you know, for my actual dogs, I'm not sure I would wanna, I'm not sure it would be a good idea to feed them garbage. Dental hygiene is important, but daycare owners in the state need to worry about it more than anyone. A daycare can lose its license if it doesn't help children brush their teeth after meals. As the parent of two young children, I can, I'm can i gonna give that one uh, four gavels. The struggle to actually get your children to brush teeth is real. But that's actually on pause during the pandemic. If you are going to spit after brushing, and I pray you do, make sure it lands on the sink and not a sidewalk. It's illegal to spit on the sidewalk in Massachusetts, which is a law I 100% agree with. It's gross. I've always hated it. That's one gavel. I've always hated it. It's gross. Um, but in present day, uh, the, when, there's no excuse for anybody spitting in public given the virus. So that, zero gavels for that one. If you're the kind of lawbreaker who spits in public, you're probably also likely to scream and yell at sports games. Well, there's a law for that. You can be fined $50 if you decide to shout obscenities at a participant or official during a sporting event. If you're over 16 years old, that is. I give it four gavels. It, it, it can't be a law that applies to Boston because it would, it would just, it would just be a ridiculous law, obviously flouted at all sporting events at all times. So anyone under 16 can go ahead and tell the ref that he's a <laughs> and a <laughs> and a. <laughs> <sighs> You're good to go. Which would be true as long as you're not taking the Lord's name in vain.
You can score up to a year in jail or a maximum $300 fine for audibly disrespecting God, Jesus, or just the Bible in general. Five gavels again. Uh, we, we, we don't live in a world where, where, where that's the way we organize ourselves anymore. That's letting people off pretty easy because, as I recall in the Bible I read as a kid, the Christian God has done much, much worse to people that upset him. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. So you probably broke a weird law or regulation at some point in your life, but don't worry about them too much. Just try your best to be a law abiding citizen. And for the love of God, don't spit on the sidewalk. <laughs>